we are reducing the likelihood of people committing further offences. We are doing that better than has happened at any other time in the last 20 years. It works. The work that we do here is enabling people who've either come out from prison or who are on community sentences um, to be in a safe and secure environment, kind of like a halfway house, rather than coming straight out uh, and straight back into the environment in which they were offending. We can enable them to get back um, into the community um, whilst monitoring um, their movements and what they do and ensuring that the triggers for their offending uh, are being addressed. You know, when I first came here, it was, I, I didn't think there was any hope, but there is, I know there is. That's what this place teaches you, really. If, 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 I, if I hadn't come to, you know, if I, hadn't, if I didn't have the help, either he'd, he'd, he'd be prison or I'd be dead. Before time, yeah. If you talk to offenders, what they frequently say is, actually, it's easier doing a short quiet prison sentence sitting in your cell than it is being held to account by probation staff in the community and if you don't comply being taken back to court. Probation is not a soft option, sitting in a prison cell can be. Welcome back everyone to session two out of session 14 of the Drink Impaired Drivers Programme. Offending behaviour programmes are aimed at people who commit the same crime again and again. It's all about the consequences of drinking and driving. They're designed to help people look at why they commit the crime and ways in which they can change their behaviour to do something different in the future. To examine how drinking and driving behaviour affects other people. OK, so any questions on that? So I'm going to do a drug test now, if that's OK. If you could take this swab and put it in your mouth in between your cheeks up here. Offenders who do have um, significant Class A drug habits invariably fund their um, drug use via crime. The last sentence I'd done was quite a big package, community-based package, opposed to prison. Um, but it was a good kick in the right direction that I needed. The people I'm working with at the moment tend to be the chaotic drug users and prolific offenders. I had no structure to anything. I didn't even know what day of the week it was most times. You've got to be consistent in, in the message that you give to them, but at the same time caring. Build up a relationship and help them to move on. And what I want you to do is pop the swab into here. The more we work with people who have drug problems, the less likely they are to re-offend, and that means less victims. So if somebody presents high risk like a sexual offender or a domestic abuse offender, we're required to, with the police and the prison service, under the arrangements that we refer to as MAPA, multi-agency public protection arrangements, to have social services, local housing, education service, all the people that work with members of the community to share risk assessment. The police, probation, the courts, the Crown Prosecution Service all need to work together to reduce the risk posed by dangerous offenders. OASIS is a computer system which allows us to input information about offenders. We use OASIS before sentencing to create a pre-sentence report. The information that we're presenting to the court up to the minute so that the court can make the best decision in terms of sentencing. With restorative justice, we try to enable the offender and the victim to work together to look at the crime that's taken place and to try to restore some justice to the victim. The victim's voice is often lost in the criminal justice process. It fo the focus is on courts, prisons, police, the actual process of the court hearing. And afterwards, it all goes quiet for victims. And then suddenly, they find that plans for the offender are being made and they need to be part of that. 
if you send someone to prison for three months, their likelihood of committing more crime goes up. If you put them on probation supervision, their likelihood of further offending goes down. As a form of punishment, it gets your attention and also the work that you're doing does actually help. Working in the community for a minimum of 40 hours up to 300 hours. So it's a lot of hours. And that's work that's going to be undertaken by someone who has offended and they're actually going to do work that the community would like to see done. For the right offender, unpaid work is an appropriate sentence. It's punishment with a purpose. I've got a certain amount of hours to do. It's going to take me, you know, quite a few weeks to do that. Negative for me because I've got to be here, but it's not a negative thing, this. The last thing I want to do is be locked up. It's better for them to be out in the community doing something more constructive and being in a prison for a minor offence. We are being punished, but hey, at the end of the day, if you do a crime, you've got to do your time. You should know better. Obviously it's a punishment, but it's a good form of punishment, obviously. Because like I said, if you're, if you're in prison, then you're just you know, going to sit there and rot away, while, whereas they've got us out here every Saturday, tidying up stuff. I joined the probation service because I wanted to make a difference to people's lives and I wanted to reduce the amount of damage that troubled and difficult people do to other people and the damage that that does to their own lives, the people that they care about, their families, and the impact that their damaging behaviour has on the rest of us.